First, Twin Peaks was unfashionable in 1992. This is an understatement, and a complete reversal from 1990. Initially praised as television savior, David Lynch made for great copy. Aesthetic radical, cultural conservative, and glamorous celebrity. The boy next door delivering subversive surrealism to middle America's living rooms. What a story for the postmodern 90s. But if the media flattered Lynch, it expected to be flattered in return. If Twin Peaks was a work of art, they needed overt reassurance. And if it was just a joke, they wanted to be in on it. I've heard about you. When the early second season insisted on patience and plunged into darkness, the critics' enthusiastic consensus was flipped on its head. Twin Peaks Breaks All the Rules became Twin Peaks Doesn't Play Fair. The press swiftly rebranded Lynch as a cynical huckster, laughing at his own audience. The story stuck, and for this reason, any Twin Peaks movie would have been regarded as an elaborate hoax and widely rejected in 1992. Second, Twin Peaks was interested in Cooper and the town. Beyond the media's hostility and the public's disinterest, a small but devoted following was still drawn to the cancelled TV show. To build a niche franchise upon this base, the story must continue its late season 2 recovery by painting the picture of a wacky community against an elaborate mythological backdrop, while following a more complicated Agent Cooper. Twin Peaks, meaning the fans, lead showrunner Mark Frost, and the narrative momentum of the show itself, all pointed in this direction. I have a definite feeling it will be a place both wonderful and strange. But Frost was busy with Storyville, his directorial debut, and Twin Peaks Firewalk With Me was Lynch's personal project. He had mostly been absent from the second half of the series, when this new direction took hold, and he did not want to continue it. Third. David Lynch was interested in Laura. For Lynch, the magic of Twin Peaks died with the end of the Laura Palmer investigation. The murdered teenager embodied mystery, darkness, and beauty, qualities that have always attracted Lynch as an artist. The show's early quest to learn her secrets reflected his own burning desire, so he reset the clock with a prequel, zooming in on the not-yet-dead girl. For the director, as well as actor Cheryl Lee, the object of Twin Peaks had become the subject. The film asks viewers to reset their priorities and reorient their identification away from the comforting figure responding to a crisis to the victim whose life provides this crisis. This takes us head on into a darkness and disorientation only suggested by the series. Fourth, Firewalk With Me believes in the spirit world. Many viewers who haven't watched the show assume that Bob and the Lodge mythology are figments of Laura's imagination, self-defense against a more terrible truth. The full context of Twin Peaks contradicts this reading, as do many passages in the film itself. Even at its most focused and realistic, Twin Peaks maintains a cosmic, supernatural context. This can be a troubling distraction for anyone caught up in the intense subjectivity of Laura's life. Bob is real. But Lynch always uses fantastical elements for allegory rather than escape. If the Lodge spirits exist independently of our protagonist's psychodrama, it is because the film has something to say about a larger struggle between the forces of darkness and light. It's up to us to determine Laura's place in this struggle. Fifth, Firewalk With Me is about sexual abuse. Did you sometimes have the feeling that Laura was harboring some awful secret. Throughout the show, there are vague, excited references to Laura's mystery, her darkness. Black and dark. And especially, her secrets. And around those secrets, she built the fortress. Firewalk With Me reminds us that these coy signifiers refer to something all too real. The repeated rape of an adolescent by her own father. The psychological effects of this abuse are portrayed with devastating realism. <laughs> alienating fans accustomed to Twin Peaks as entertainment. Laura was always a victim of incest. This fact has never actually been in doubt. Instead, the series suggests that her abuser, himself a captive of evil forces, was not responsible for his actions. You've been a good vehicle. But the film blurs Bob's and Leland's motivations, complicates Leland's self-awareness, 
and ultimately denies the devil made me do it excuse. Most importantly, Firewalk With Me places the pain of the victim at the story's dead center. No intermediary figures like Cooper or Donna or Jacoby can mute Laura's agony. The film privileges direct perception over clinical contextualization. This is trauma without filter. Sixth, Firewalk With Me subverts Twin Peaks. The film often suggests that we are watching a funhouse reflection of the show. It's doppelganger, if you will. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. Firewalk With Me trades distance wide shots for impressionistic close-ups. An eclectic ensemble for individual perspective. Playful pastiche for unremitting seriousness. And spooky suggestion for graphic revelation. In doing so, it deliberately rejects the show's signature qualities. Despite its many references to the TV series, this feature film actually does stand alone as an independent work of art. Viewers unfamiliar with the series often appreciate it more than fans with their built-in expectations. Embraced as a vivid sensory experience, Firewalk With Me is charged with tragic grandeur and exquisite sensitivity to sound, color, rhythm, and gesture. We, however, are reaching Firewalk With Me as the culmination of a journey, and it is that too. Seven, Firewalk With Me fulfills Twin Peaks. The opening scenes of the pilot indelibly establish Twin Peaks as a series of discoveries about Laura Palmer. Firewalk With Me keeps this promise. The movie is flush with callbacks to the iconography of the first season. When revisited, these coolly alluring images become overpoweringly poignant, secret passageways between two very different worlds. They whisper sorrowfully to us that Twin Peaks' magical mood was carved by the psychic reverberations of Laura's suffering. I looked into her eyes and were clear. It was like she was Laura again. Strangely, the TV show needs Firewalk With Me. More than Firewalk With Me needs the TV show. Not only does the movie deepen our appreciation of what we've already seen, it continues Lynch's work in the final episode, reconciling the show's original iconography with its imported mythology. Firewalk With Me restores the show's dramatic center of gravity, connects the supernatural mythos to human reality, and finally achieves spiritual triumph. To get there, we travel across a warped version of the familiar Twin Peaks terrain. Originally, we accompanied the reliable Agent Cooper through the tricky but navigable town of Twin Peaks to discover the secrets of dead girl Laura Palmer. This time, we're hurled from a chaotic, incapable cluster of FBI agents through the hostile facade of Deer Meadow, Do you know Teresa Banks? back door to the Black Lodge, until we enter Laura's living world, for only she can reach the heart of her own mystery. The question, who is Laura Palmer, is going to be answered in a most unexpected way. 